Please. Call the meeting to order for the uh, September 18, 2018 planning board meeting. We have quite a full agenda tonight, so we'll try to keep things moving. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, approval of minutes for June 25. Motion to approve. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Five, I abstain, I wasn't at the meeting. All right, that was quick. All right. You're on a roll. <laughs> Old business, uh, 69 Beach Bluff Terrace, private access way permit. Peter Ware is requesting a 90 day extension of the approval granted December 19, 2017, and extended to April 23, 2018 for a private access way to create access for a lot located at the rear of 69 Beach Bluff Terrace. Hi. Hi, Peter Weir. Go for it, Peter, your reasoning. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I was just requesting that uh, another extension, which would be the last one. I have uh, everything in place to finish this up and I've, I've already contacted all the parties to move forward uh, a couple weeks ago. I guess the reasoning for, for the second extension, I was just trying to push off payments as far as possible. Uh, I didn't realize that I'd have to come up here again or I wouldn't have done it, but that, that's, that's it. Reasons, yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Well, do I have a motion? Go ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials previously submitted and the facts presented, they request that Peter Weir to extend the previous approval of private way access permit for 69 Beach Bluff Terrace be approved with a 90 day extension to December 17, 2018. Do I have a second? Sure. Okay, Jim. Any, any discussion? Um, I. I, d I would say that I, um, I would not want another one after this for sure, and it's since there's not not really anything and it sounds like an ordinance, um, it just seems like pushing these off, pushing these off. Eventually, the things could change. I didn't even sit in on on this because I wasn't on the board at that point, so I have no idea um, what the issues were. But I, d I don't think we want to set a precedent for. Uh, doing more than two extensions, certainly. That would be my my feeling. Okay, thank you. Any other comment? Questions? All right. Do Although, we want to add something to the motion? I would prefer to have it say that this would be the last and final of two, but um, however that's worded. Comments but from that's others? Just me. Go ahead. I, I would say it's, it, if he does not proceed within these 90 days, it will come back to us. And at that point, the board certainly could say no. So I'm okay with not putting a friendly amendment on it okay. for that reason. I agree with Victoria. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> would, would you be willing to give this applicant your sentiment? right now about what you expect for any future extension requests? Okay. I think he's probably figured it out. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Peter? Yeah, I haven't heard any compelling circumstances why the extension is given this time, nor why in the future we would want to. Does the applicant have any, anything to add on that point as to why the, why the extensions? Sorry, so the, so the, Why are you seeking this uh, this extension? Why didn't you? Well, I'm seeking just to finish up the, the plans. Everything's all set to go. I just have to wrap those final few things up with the engineer and, and uh, architect. I mean, uh, surveyor and lawyer. So do you have a contractor lined up to go ahead and execute? Yeah, they're already doing it right now. They're in the process. So once that's done, I'm, I'm bringing it in here. But your sentiment would be this is this would be the yep. last. Yes. Is that is the extension? You, does he have to finish work or does he have to start work? You granted an approval in December with conditions on it. Yeah. There have been no revisions to the plan 
to comply with the conditions. Once those revisions are made, the plan would be presented to the board for signatures and then recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. So it hasn't even happened. I mean, we're so far away from actually breaking ground. Oh, all right. I, I got the impression that he was breaking ground already. So. It's a matter of getting the plans ready for filing. So any other comments? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Good. Okay. Thank you. Item number three, Sarka Sewer Service Area Amendment. Say that three times fast. That's hard. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council has referred to the Planning Board a, requ a request to add 33 Wells Road to the sewer service area. Section 15-1-4I, Sewer Ordinance. Is there anyone here to present, or are you going to give us a history here, Morgan? Is Mrs. Sarka here? Is there anyone here by the name of Sarka? Okay, no. Nope. I was told that Mrs. Sarka would be here. She, she might not realize we'd be this quick. <laughs> okay, so what is before the board is a, a referral from the town council, and I gave you the section of the sewer ordinance that applies. And basically, if a sewer service area is going to be amended, um, the planning board should be asked its opinion. And that's what you're being asked to recommend, whether or not this makes sense or not. The Sarka lot is on a road that has public sewer. It's got public sewer provided to all the abutting properties. So this would be kind of like filling in a little spot. Um, there is another property, just like the Sarka property, where the sewer was extended to it several years ago. So this is a traditional process. Any questions from anyone? A comment? Go ahead. I would say that I would support this because it's in line with our comprehensive plan to um, extend sewer in areas where the sewer is available. Um, it makes a lot of good sense to get as many people back onto the sewer and away from septic for many different reasons, so I'm going to support this. Go ahead, Jim. Um, I guess I've never been to one where nobody showed up so far. Can we drive on or we wait to see if they show up and go on to the next item on the agenda? I say we continue on. Okay, then I've got a motion for the board to consider. Okay, I'm... Uh, if we're ready to go I'm to that. I'm going to do something crazy. Okay. I'm going to ask if there's anyone in the audience who would like to comment. We do no. allow public comment on items. And so I will open this up for public comment, even though we don't have a formal hearing. And if there is no one who wishes to speak, it'll be a real short public comment period. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on this item? Uh, seeing no one, I'll close the public comments at time. All right. Anyone else? The door is open. Oh. Peter. Did, uh, oh. Yes. Sue, Sue, we're taking up your item. Oh, good. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Come on up to the front. <laughs> oh, Sue Sarka. Just a quick overview of why you want to do this. Okay, so um, 33 Wells Road, we're uh, putting on an addition to our home, and the existing uh, septic system is original to the home, which is about 28 years old now, and it's, we've been advised that we either need to um, update and, and or replace the septic, septic system, or there might be an opportunity for us to um, get on the town system. So that's what we're doing. That's what we'd like to do. Okay. Are there any questions of the applicant? Guys are awfully quiet tonight. <laughs> okay, Jim, go for it. Um, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the request made by Sue and Greg Sarka and the facts presented, the planning board recommends that 33 Wells Road be added to the sewer service area. Second. Any, any additional comment, discussion? 
All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. You're good. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, 185 Spermick Avenue site plan amendment. Elsie Maxwell is requesting amendment to an existing site plan approval for 185 Spermick Avenue to create a lot around the existing building, section 19-9, .9, site plan completeness, and public hearing this evening. All right, introduce Hello. yourself. I'm and Daniel Maxwell, representing Elsie. Um, what we've done here, this, this, I guess you said it was a site plan amendment. There's a lot of line changes. We've turned a 12 acre, 12 acres of farmland with a, with a daycare sitting in the middle of it. Oh, this is for the Ocean House daycare, is at the site. We've, we've turned that into, separated the lot so that the, the business is on its own small lot and the surrounding farmland is separated. So, if you want to look at the, it, for those of you with the paper copies, I highlighted the changes in yellow, but I can point it out up here. But basically, you're looking at this Spurman Avenue is at the bottom, and uh, north is to the right. So basically, you're facing west. There's the daycare right there. The original line goes way out here. This property here is the medical building. So what we've added is these lines right here. And then we've done an easement for storm drain right here and for sewer right here. There's no change to the business or the use of the building and no change to the building or the parking, landscaping, anything. Just all, the only changes are the lot lines. That's about it. It's been a while. I'm trying to remember my next steps. <laughs> completeness. Completeness, that's right. We're going to discuss completeness of the application. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on completeness of this application? All right, seeing no one, are there any questions from the board about completeness of this application? So I just want to, this is for clarity for me, this, this site exists as you show it today. It's just that in the past, the lot lines around the daycare have never been drawn. Is that correct? Am I cor understand it correctly? The, the lot the, for the daycare has never been actually set aside? It, it is. It has been. It has what been. What we're doing is correcting what was missed in the past. Okay. All right. Do I have um, no questions? Do I have a, a motion on completeness? Go ahead. Uh, motion for completeness uh, for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of L.C. Maxwell for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the property located at 185 Spurwink Avenue to create a separate lot for the daycare facility be deemed complete with the following waiver granted. Number one, a waiver from providing an erosion control plan because no ground disturbance is proposed. Do I have a second? Peter? All right. We're good. Any further comment uh, on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. So the next uh, order of business is a public hearing on this item. So um, on the merits of the, of the request, not just on completeness of the submission. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about the merits of this request? Seeing no one, the public hearing period is closed. All right. And I open them up to the board for questions regarding. I have one comment slash question. Okay. Um, and I, I don't think this 
going to affect anything. I just wanted to point out if the easement uh, goes over an existing hoop house and it basically restricts the right of building and also allows the right to keep the surface of the ground above said systems free from structures. So, <laughs> uh, you're, I mean, you're kind of granting them the ability to take out part of your hoop house, but that's just, you know, as it's drawn anyway, that, that's just a point of fact. I don't, I don't oppose this at all. I'm just making aware um, the way this is written, it reads that part of that hoop house could go. Go ahead, Danny. It's essentially a temporary building, I guess. I don't know what you would call that in the ordinances. Yeah. But it's basically just pipes in the ground. Yeah, hoop houses are considered temporary structures. Are, are they not? <coughs> Am I correct, Maureen? So, I, I am the owner of that said hoop house. Yeah. I mean, if that storm drain needed to be repaired, replaced, it would not bother me. I'd be involved in it anyway. Um, All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this uh, proposal? Go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> Well, this is essentially uh, cleaning up the documentary record on the uh, configuration of this parcel, and it seems to me a, a good idea and worthy of approval. Okay. Anything else from anybody? A motion? Go for it. Motion for approval. Finding of fact. One, Elsie Maxwell is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the property located at 185 Spurwink Avenue to create a separate lot for the daycare facility, which requires review under section 199 site plan regulations. Two, the amendments are compatible with the natural capabilities of the site to support development. Three, <coughs> access to the development will not be on roads, I'm sorry, will be on roads with adequate adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 1978 off-street parking. Four, the plan does provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development. Five, the plan does provide for adequate collection and discharge of stormwater. Six, the development will not cause soil erosion because ground disturbance is not proposed as part of this amendment. Seven, the development will be provided with an adequate quantity and quality of potable water. Eight, the development will provide for adequate sewage disposal. Nine, the development will be provided with access to utilities. <coughs> Excuse me. Ten, the development will not locate, store, or discharge materials harmful to surface or groundwaters. 11, the development will provide adequate disposal of solid waste. 12, the development will not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. 13, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. 14, the development will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. 15. The development will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site and screening as needed. 16. The development will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. 17. Storage of exterior materials on the site that may be visible to the public will be screened by fencing or landscaping. 18. The application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of L.C. Maxwell for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the property located at 185 Spurwing Avenue to create a separate lot for the daycare facility be approved with the following condition. 1. That the pros that the proposed easements be in a form acceptable to the town attorney and signed and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds within one year of this approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? All right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Danny. <coughs> Now
Next item on the agenda, Haynes Private Access Way. Stephen and Jennifer Haynes are requesting a private access way permit to create front frontage for an existing lot located at 28 Woodland Road, section 19-7-9, private access way permit completeness. Carol? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'd like to recuse myself from this item. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Also, <clears throat> good evening. Uh, John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. And <clears throat> I represent uh, Steve and Jennifer uh, Haynes, who, is, who are here this evening. Um, I'm basically, I'm filling in for Bob Metcalf, who is on vacation right now, so please be with me, uh, bear with me uh, as I go through this application. Um, So the, the lot is located on Woodland Road. Uh, this is Woodland Road here, and it intersects Shore Road at this point here. It's actually, the intersection is actually in the city of South Portland. Um, let's see. This is an aerial survey of the, uh, the subject property, the Haynes. Um, this is Woodland Road here, this is Warren Avenue, and as you can see that uh, it's surrounded by single-family lots, there are actually eight single-family lots surrounding the property, uh, two of which are owned by the applicant. Uh, the parcel is a non-conforming lot uh, that doesn't have the required road frontage. Um, therefore, we need to put a private access way in to create that road frontage. Uh, this is the lot here. Um, and it's a little, just under a half acre uh, in size. It's located in the residential C zone. And um, um, the 40 foot wide portion uh, is located right here. It has 40 feet of frontage on Woodland Road. Um, and uh, the uh, 30 feet, I just want to mention it's 40 feet wide, but the, it, uh, for a private access way, uh, the requirement is 30 feet wide, so we exceed that. Uh, the vegetation on the lot, uh, the, this section is uh, minimally uh, vegetated. Uh, the building portion of the lot um, is, is entirely vegetated with uh, an understory of herbaceous uh, vegetation. Uh, the topography, as you can see, uh, it slopes from Woodland Road uh, down to the rear property line. In, in the 40 foot wide section. Uh, there is a topographic knoll in the northern portion of the property. Um, it's about a four foot high knoll. Um, yeah, the drainage in this section slopes right down the middle of the 40 foot portion of the road and it goes off the property and uh, enters a catch basin at a low point located here. Uh, the knoll uh, slopes in, in a southerly direction. Most of it slopes or drains to this catch basin. A small portion drains to this low point and then enter, exits uh, in this direction. Um, there's an eight inch uh, public sewer line. There's an eight inch water, public water line. There's natural gas in woodland and there's overhead electric telephone and cable. This is a, uh, just like I got three photographs of showing the, the character of the 40 foot wide section of where the uh, private access way would be. This is standing on Woodland Road looking uh, down. Uh, this is looking, this is standing about midway in that 40 foot section. Uh, 
uh, again, looking in a southerly direction. And then this is uh, in the rear of the property, uh, looking back up towards Woodland. You know, it's, it's mostly uh, deciduous trees on either side of this 40-foot wide uh, former right-of-way. So <clears throat> no, this is a, a copy of the uh, layout and utilities plan. Uh, as you can see, the private access way is designed in the middle of the 40-foot wide uh, strip of land it extends back approximately 160 feet to this point here. Um, the uh, private access way has been designed in accordance with the town standards for an access way. There's an overall uh, section of 18 feet wide. The travel way is 14 feet wide with two grass gravel shoulders on either side. Uh, there's a buildup of gravel underneath and then uh, topped off with topsoil and, and grass. Uh, the turnaround, um, we have done the best we can. We don't exactly meet the town standards, um, and it's because of this dimension right here. Um, it's about 10 foot too small in order for us to meet the 40 foot wide, uh, or um, 40 foot length of uh, roadway. Uh, in this point here, but we have met with Chief Gleason a couple times, reviewed it with them, and um, I don't know if you have received any comments from them. Um, the discussions were that if we could agree to a, uh, a private residential sprinkler system for the proposed residents uh, to meet public safety, that uh, uh, that he would he would agree to this, so, uh, and, and the applicant has agreed to that sprinkler system. Uh, the residence has been sited near the top of the knoll at the high point, um, and uh, with with drainage, uh, with the slope grading away. Uh, we have designed a rain garden in this section of the site to capture uh, the majority of the runoff uh, from this property, including the access way. Uh, this is a copy of the grading plan, grading and drainage plan, and we've designed the access way so with a cross slope that it drains in an easterly direction to the left side of the roadway. It will enter a, well, it will drain down a grass slope enter a culvert opening here, and then the culvert will outlet into this uh, <laughs> rain garden. It will store approximately 1,000 square feet of uh, rain during a, a rain event. And we've designed it with a, an emergency spillway located here <clears throat> in the event that there is a larger storm event and um, it captures, and it starts to overflow it will um, discharge through this emergency spillway and then enter this catch basin net here. But we, uh, again, we've, we've um, it's, it's, my, it's my belief that the drainage on this property uh, will be uh, significantly enhanced from what it is now. And the utilities, uh, we're connecting to all the public utilities. Uh, the sewer line actually runs down here. We're going to connect to the, the sanitary sewer here, connect to the public water in Woodland. Uh, we're going to have underground electric telephone and cable, and I believe the applicant's going to connect to the natural gas. In terms of the buffer, uh, it is the applicant's intention to uh, preserve as much vegetation as possible. Um, and we are going to preserve all of vegetation within the building setback line. Um, and we've also uh, designed, this is an updated footprint from the plan that you have, I believe. And we have agreed to offset it um, 10 feet, the required 10 feet from the building setback, um, in addition to having the, the 10 foot wide uh, building setback. 
Uh, there's, there's one waiver that uh, we're at, with it, we're requesting, and that is the letter from the Portland Water District. Uh, because we're having a sprinkler system, they require specific, specific information, um, design information on the sprinkler system, which um, is in the design phase right now. Uh, so they won't issue that letter until we submit uh, that information. So we are asking for a sort of a temporary waiver at this point. Um, and then uh, with regard to the review comments from the town engineer, uh, I'll just review uh, quickly our responses. Uh, item, this is off of Steve Harding's Sebago Technics uh, letter. Items one through three, uh, no response required. Number four, uh, there, there's a, uh, he mentioned a standard note be placed on the drawing um, regarding the, uh, that the town won't be re responsible for the maintenance of the roadway. Uh, that note is on the plan. It was just a, a miss on his part. Uh, the applicant agrees to provide a public easement uh, to the town uh, for the uh, existing sewer line that is here. Uh, the plans have been revised to show a Y connection to the sewer line. Number seven, no response required. Number eight, um, Steve asked for a dimension on the front portion of the access way and where the pavement is, and we've placed that. It's a 20-foot 20 foot from the edge of pavement of woodland back, and we've placed that dimension on it. Um, and then finally, I just want to respond to a couple of letters that, that have been sent to the planning board uh, from neighbors. Um, on a couple of letters, they represented that the lot is the low area of the, um, of this, of this area, I guess. Uh, the low point of this area. And I just want to clarify that it's not the entire lot that is the low point. And it's obvious by this no here. Uh, the low area of this lot is right along the southerly boundary line where the catch basins are. So I just want to make that clear. Um, and then the other item that I want to clarify is on the rights of the neighbors. Um, couple of the abutters are asked um, if they're going to lose their rights uh, to this portion of the property and the answer is no, they're not going to. Um, they will maintain their private rights um, to, to walk, to connect to utilities. Um, this, was, this goes back to the late 1800s for the subdivision plan. Uh, there, there are private rights for any of the uh, abutting lot owners in this, in this subdivision. So I just want to clarify that. And that's, that's it. All right. Thank you. So, um, regarding completeness, I think I unplugged my microphone. Uh, You're okay. I'm okay. Thanks. So, uh, I, does anyone have any comment on completeness of this application? Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, just one question, John. Um, am I correct in understanding that the plan is now to have the driveway gravel, but with the possibility of Paving it in the future. Yes, um, the 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 gravel the gravel access way uh, right now is proposed to be gravel, but the applicant wants to reserve the right to pave it at some point in the future. So, for any runoff considerations, we should consider as if it were paved, probably, right? Yes. Yes. Good question. Go ahead. Um, on your on the uh, road and on the bottom part is a ditch. Does that water? Yeah. Does that water just go directly to the catch? Basin? It does. And it is does. there much coming into that from the 
adjacent properties below. Yeah, um, these, these are the existing contours here, and as you can see, there is some uh, drainage flow that flows in this direction. It will be captured by the ditch and enter this catch basin here. But again, um, currently the way it is today, all of this runoff goes to this catch basin. We're going to take, you know, probably uh, two-thirds of it and capture it for the rain garden. Okay. Right. Now we're discussing completeness. Do we have all the information we need to make a decision? Yeah. I'll get I'm doing it backwards on that. No, no, no. <laughs> so anyone else on the board have any questions about completeness? All right. Is there anyone in the public who has comment on the completeness of this application? That means do we have enough information to move forward? And, and that doesn't mean it has to be all perfect right now. There's time between now and the final submission for people to fill in some blanks and answer some questions. But uh, do we have enough to move forward is the, is the question. Is there anyone who would like to speak? If you'd like to speak, please come to the podium. Uh, state your name and address. Uh, keep, please keep your comments to three minutes, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> name is Brad Norris. Uh, I live at 26 Woodland Road, um, so I'm an, an abutting neighbor. And it was my understanding that they were seeking a waiver on um, the stormwater runoff uh, plan. Uh, and that hasn't been brought up tonight at all. And I have very, very serious concerns with that because I'll, I've got a picture here that I'd like to pass around um, that shows, you know, what the, what the conditions are now. You know, I understand that the Haynes have an opportunity to develop this property and, and I, you know, I, I, I will admit I don't like it, but that's life. <laughs> we, we move on to it. I just want to make sure that it's done right. We've invested several thousand dollars into our backyard, and I don't want to see it turned into a, suddenly turned into a, a swamp back there, that's all. Uh -huh. um, the other concern that I have too is of the gravel yard. Um, this home is going to be literally in the backyards of about nine people, even though they're all just only six direct abutting neighbors. And a gravel yard in the summer, a gravel road, if you've ever been beside one, they're atrocious. I mean, they kick up dust all summer long, and who wants to live in the middle of that? Suddenly we've got nine homes that are in the middle. And very frankly, if they reserve the right to pave it, I don't know why they don't pave it right away. Um, and then I know also I was reading some of the documents from the board, and, and there were some concerns about the, um, a lack of, of um, landscaping plan that went along with it as well. Um, so with this lack of a stormwater, uh, uh, plan and uh, lack of a plan for for the uh, for the landscaping. Um, I I don't consider it a complete application personally. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any? Uh, yes. Uh, good evening. I'm Mark Mercero. I live at 17 Charles Road, which is the property on the lower right quadrant of in the uh, picture that's showing there. And just a point of information, and I, I couldn't see Brad's um, picture that he handed around, but regarding, I, I too am concerned about uh, stormwater runoff, especially during you know, uh, rain events or you know, spring runoff situations like that. I mean, the, and if, what I, if I heard correctly, it sounded like the low point was slightly different than my conception. My conception is based on where, where I see standing water in the late winter, early spring, and during you know rain events, and it's pretty much at the at the end of the driveway, the planned driveway where it meets um, where uh, my wife's and I property, 17 Charles is, and that that's kind of like that's the low point according to where the water sits, and it comes right down that driveway path, and probably somewhat down the the high that four foot knoll, somewhat somewhere somewhat down that direction, and there's not great communication. To the, to the existing catch basin, to my knowledge. My wife and I have a little shade garden in that area. So, um, you know, it's, um, I, we're just concerned if there's a lot more excess rainwater runoff that it could um, 
turn our little little square um, area kind of mucky and uh, you know just uh, we wouldn't be able to use it the way we use it now. Great. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and I'll, I'll hand this picture around. It's, it's not a great sure. picture, but it, it was taken, uh, I think, in the late winter. But it shows about where, the, where my conception of the low point is. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Could you come to the podium before you state your question? <laughs> Just for semantics. I own the. Um, Can you your name and address, name? please? Sorry. Address. My name is uh, Dave Connor. I live at uh, 13 Charles Road, so I am. I own the storm drain. Um, I guess that's silly, <laughs> but it's in my yard. Uh, so I'm just looking a uh, question of semantics that um, the gentleman was stating. So like um, he said that current runoff runs into that storm drain. So I wasn't sure like if that meant um, he thought that like there was actual water that flowed into that. Because um, that's, to be honest, I don't recall that ever happening um, since I've lived there. And I, my parents bought that house in 79. So that's, that's never been a thing. Um, so I just, you know, I don't know, like I hear water running through there, but water doesn't physically spill into it. Um, so I was just curious if the proposed plan was going to be something that was going to then be having water physically spill into it. Because again, the history, and I've had a long history, 79, water is never actually collected in that area where it was. I don't know if they like put it in the wrong spot or what the deal was. Um, I can hear water, I can see water physically running like when I look down through the drain, but again, water never, in all the years I've ever lived there, is that physically spilled over the sides of that down into that drain. So, just curious if that was something that was expected to then occur from this point on, or, or not, or if that's just, um, yeah, I don't know. So that's okay. my only question. Good question, so. all right, thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing no one, I'll close the public comment period and we will continue to address, we will answer all of those questions. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Um, this is. <laughs> Maureen, this is probably a question for you or for anyone who knows more than I do about this. In terms of completeness, <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, the waiver of a stormwater management plan, um, that's part of that? Is that we're deciding they can have a waiver, waiver as part of the completeness or is that part of the final? Yeah, well, I think the applicant needs to step up to the podium and make sure that what I'm stating is accurate, but I believe that the applicant is not asking for a waiver of the stormwater management plan. And I would suggest to the board that the the plan that you see behind you that has drainage arrows, that has topography, that talks about um, verbally how the water moves around the site and where it exits the site could be considered a stormwater management plan. That what really is being um, not submitted is stormwater calculations. And stormwater calculations technically are not required for a private access way permit. Um, and in your site plan regulations, you don't require stormwater calculations for an impervious surface increase of 10,000 square feet or less. And the reason you don't do that is because the stormwater modeling software that everyone uses will not be useful for small amounts of impervious surface. So even if you had the stormwater calculations, they, they just don't function at this small amount of impervious surface. So if you were at an acre, 40,000 square feet of impervious surface, I would strongly urge you to have stormwater calculations done. But uh, for this project, um, I think that's what's really being discussed, is those calculations, not a whole stormwater management plan being waived. Yeah, the only reason why I ask is because the, the letter of September 11th says that specifically has requested a waiver, so I just... Yes, um, I, I do understand that's what it says, and I would suggest that that letter from the town engineer um, maybe could be, it's your it's advice to the planning board, and I think it, it could have been honed a little bit, 
um, but also the applicant has been honing the information they have been providing as well. So I guess the question would be to the applicant, are you not requesting a waiver? That would be my no. question. Yeah. I mean, Maureen is right, um, we, we, and you're right. Um, we did, in our submission package, request a waiver, but only on the stormwater calculations. Uh, we did provide in your booklet um, a, a narrative on the existing and proposed drainage. Uh, we provided details on the rain garden. And, uh, and since we're enhancing the drainage and we're, as I mentioned, we're, we're decreasing the rate of flow um, specifically off of this area here, which currently all drains to this low point uh, off of our property into the catch basin. Um, and we're taking the majority of the runoff and uh, directing it to the rain garden, which will, if you're all familiar with the rain garden, it, it's a depression in the landscape that will store water, allow it to infiltrate down through a, um, a base of material, um, a mixture of sand, topsoil, and compost, it will allow it to infiltrate down through, and, um, and it's also planted um, with wetland plants uh, in the, the top layer. So, for those reasons, uh, we did request a waiver on the stormwater calculations. Could I? Go ahead. And I feel a little bad about what I suggest about the town engineer. I believe when the town engineer said the waiver, he under, he, when he said stormwater management plan, he was thinking stormwater calculations, because that's what engineers look at. Mm. Go ahead, John. In line of that, how much impervious surface is uh, request or is uh, um, on this plan? I mean, I know that usually, usually it's the ten thousand dollars or ten thousand. I think it's a, I think it's at twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Okay. All right. So it's not even a quarter of what's required for the ten thousand ten thousand square feet no. dollars. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Oh, the, one Go other ahead. question. Uh, maybe the applicant can take a look at the pictures that were provided, and um, just let us know if. The applicant has any idea of where on the map the pictures were taken? We're not. I, I'm personally not familiar too much with the property, and I know one of the pictures was said to be at the end of the proposed driveway. Um, but I was wondering if you could take a look at the other picture. Not to put you on the spot. I'm assuming we'll probably have a site walk, maybe. But um, again, you know. Um, Bob Metcalf was the one that sort of did all the work on this. Okay. Uh, like I said, I apologize for putting you on the spot like that. I can speak to the smallest picture. This I took, it's from my yacht. I'm very much sorry. This is looking from my yacht to the Kings Company. So this is my, right. um, no, this is um, This is six feet of grade change from here down to here, is six feet. And then um, it's relatively flat. Okay. It's relatively flat from here to here. And that's why you're getting the puddling um, during a rain event, because there's not, there's not a lot of pitch there. <clears throat> um, eventually it does seep to the catch basin, but um, you're not getting you're not getting any puddling here because of the gradient. It's it's only when it uh, runs off the the applicant's property. 
And then the, the culvert that you propose for the north side, yeah. that's designed to take, a, like you said, two thirds of the rain on the, the driveway that would go into that other? It would go into the rain garden. Okay. Yeah. And um, thanks. the other question I had is, uh, you heard the comment about the drain. Um, excuse me? Okay. Uh, well, no, the the drain that the um, the last person spoke about. Um, oh yeah. Um, I wasn't sure where. Do you know I'm, where that is? I'm not aware. I mean, with, if if he's if he's referring to the actual storm drain pipe, no, no, nothing will enter the storm drain pipe. That's subsurface. If he's referring to a, a catch basin, um, then. Uh, it's it's probably I don't I don't know because I haven't I haven't seen it. Um, if he says there's no water entering it, then there must be something to do with the grades around it. Could it's he come up and could he come up and show us if he was in that point? No, not, it's no, not, it's no. not allowing the uh, the runoff to enter that. Uh, probably because of the grades. These are this right. is a question. Um, make sure Bob knows. When we do our site walk exactly. over there, we will want to to understand how that works. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't think uh, two or three people pointing here and there. We want to do it on site ourselves, and okay. with the engineer who's working on this project. So, I I appreciate the question and I understand it, and I just think it's more of an on site kind of understanding. So we're still trying to get through completeness here. Are there any other questions? Um, another, well, here I'm gonna go. The buffering, as you've picked up, is another key issue that we will wanna see on plans in the future, I believe. Am I correct? Buffering. Would you say, I didn't, couldn't hear, would you Buffering say? is something that we will want to see yes. more of in the future or have more detail on in the future. As I remember, there was no fence planned. So, so we, even, again. Even though we're, we're, we're keeping the structure 10 feet away from the building. We'll, we'll want to, and maybe this is another site walk discussion, yeah. Yeah, that's right. but just something for a note to give Bob to keep in mind. Okay. Anything else? Do I have a motion on completeness? I got one. Go ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered, uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephen and Jennifer Haynes for private access way permit to create adequate road frontage for an existing lot located at 28 Woodland Road be deemed complete. No waivers are included. No waivers for complete. For, hmm? What about the waiver on the stormwater calculations? And also there's, I think the there's places. actually, I mean, let's, let's look at the checklist. I got a second from Jim. If, it's not. if you go to the checklist, this is the list of items. It's the last page of the memo in front of you. This is the list of items that are required mm -hmm. for a private access way permit. So it's not required for a private access well, way Well, you have permit. to provide information on surface water drainage. Um, I know, I, in my opinion, the private access way permit does not explicitly require stormwater calculations. calculations. Okay. But it requires stormwater, addressing stormwater you, movement. Yes. Is that okay with everybody, or do you want to? I think the applicant who requested one waiver for completeness was the, um, the stormwater calculation. No, the Portland Water District, uh, oh. the sprinkler system. Uh, it is not uncommon for us to allow something to. We recognize they're waiting on Portland Water District. Do we need to address that as a? I don't think it's a as waiver a condition. on requiring you know, it. I'm getting a lot more advice from our town attorney these days, and um, his advice is to formally include things in motion. So okay. if, if, there, if you want to treat it as a waiver, then I would add a statement to your motion. Let's see. 
where it says no waivers are included, that you may want to delete that line and instead say a waiver from submitting a letter from the Portland Water District as a part of completeness is granted because it's in process and you expect to receive it prior to approval. So you, you can, ex good. if you explicitly grant it, you have to, you should say why. So we're not, it's not a waiver, it's just a waiver for completeness. It's not a waiver of a standard for right. eventual approval or not. Okay. Okay. So that would be my friendly amendment. <laughs> as stated, as stated as by stated Maureen. By the town planner. <laughs> it's going to be happening more often. <laughs> is, the, is the friendly amendment okay with the seconder, Jim? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You guys are friendly. Um, and then it was, and the motion was made by Mr. Shalott. So then he has to agree to it. Yes. Oh I yes. Agree. I'm sorry. I did it in the opposite order. Okay. You made it. He seconded it. Okay. Yeah. Robert's rules of order. I just can't get them. All right. Anyone else? All those in favor? All right, next order of business. When do we want to do a site walk? I'm not going to ask if you want to do one. I'm assuming that we all want to do, do one. Do we want to after do we, the tabling? After or? we do the site walk scheduling. Do you know when Bob's, when's Bob due back from? Oh, he's due back on Friday, but uh, we would prefer to have it next week. So next week? Any okay. Yeah. All right. Sometime next week, which is the 25th, 24th through the 27th, I believe, something like that. Friday morning? This Friday? The 28th. Oh, the 28th. Okay. Good. When, the 28th, you said? Yeah, in the morning. Yeah. yeah. What time are we talking about? What I can't do it Friday morning. Okay, do we want to? Let's start with mornings or evenings. Most of us there. prefer mornings. But I'd rather do mornings, but I've got more flexibility. Yeah, I mean, most of, and that, that's fine. It's just that, that one morning. Oh. Well, Tuesday and Friday are not good for me. Okay. Huh. Thursday. So Thursday? Tuesday and Thursday are bad for me. <laughs> Wednesday. I can't Wednesday. do it Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> I think we got to do evening. Yeah, okay, I guess it's an evening. Any evening. With the evening of the 28th, Friday late afternoon? Friday Sorry. late afternoon? No, no. I, got that I, heard, that late, one, I heard late afternoon, so I hope <laughs> <laughs> That could be done early. We could do Wednesday afternoon, the 26th. Yeah. yeah. That works. Okay. Yep. John? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. We got yeps from everybody. So All right. Wednesday this? afternoon. Four. Four. Four thirty. Four. Four thirty. Four thirty. Going once. Four thirty. Four thirty. Yep. Four thirty. All right. Four thirty. Wednesday, the 26th. Wow. And we'll meet at the proposed driveway entrance. Yes. So we'll be parking on Woodland Road. Okay. Uh, 4.30. 4.30. All right. And the public is invited, just so you know. Um, all right. Next motion. Um, I can go ahead. Go ahead. Wouldn't it? Be it ordered that the above application is tabled to the regular October 16th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second? Second. Got John. All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right.
Next item on the agenda. Old Mill Road Private Road Amendments. Malcolm Poole on behalf of the Poole family is requesting amendments to the previously approved Old Mill Road located off Old Ocean House Road, section 19-7-9, Private Road Completeness. All right, John, you're up again. Okay. So this application um, is for an amended plan of a private road. Um, and I represent Malcolm Poole, who is here. And Ma Malcolm is the manager of the Poole family properties. Um, it's, uh, I've provided a little context map here. Uh, <coughs> this is the parcel outlined. Um, it's a 22-acre total acreage um, off of Old Ocean House Road. This is uh, Mill Pond, or uh, Mill, Old, Old, Mill, Old Mill Road, <laughs> sorry. Old Mill Road uh, that comes down and wise off and, um, and eventually goes down near the waterfront. Uh, so there's a total of seven lots. Um, and the previously approved plan was in 2005. Um, this plan includes the following amendments. And these are all outlined in your booklet. <coughs> the first is a, uh, oh, let me, the first is a um, boundary line for uh, this lot here, lot two. Um, we have reconfigured uh, this boundary line right here, it's hard to see. I don't know, Maureen, is there a way that I can enlarge this? We're passing uh, notes, sorry. Um, <laughs> the yes. Glass. This right here. See that on the left-hand corner, that little plus? Down yeah. a little bit, over a little bit, no, over more, right, right there. there. Oh, okay. I'm not used to it. This is Apple, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so the previous uh, property line uh, went right to the perimeter property, and there's the iron pin right there. And we're, what we have done is reconfigure the property line in, in this fashion here. Um, and what this does is it provides lot two with the required minimum road frontage of 125 feet. So we've extended the private road to this point and we've reconfigured the property line. The second item uh, would be a uh, creation of this small lot here. Um, this lot uh, contains the septic system, the wastewater disposal system for uh, Victoria Pools House, which is located across the public, a private road. And uh, before, it had always been an easement, and the pools have decided that they want to create actual ownership. So we've created this small, approximately quarter of an acre lot, um, and we've called it part of lot three. Uh, the uh, pedestrian access easement, uh, we've created a 50-foot wide pedestrian access easement from the end of the private road to the waterfront. And um, this uh, basically formalizes the pedestrian access for the lot owners, or the, I should say the family members, uh, to walk uh, from this point down to the waterfront. The utility easement uh, is located uh, in between the, where the septic system is in Victoria's house, um, and this is basically for an easement for the necessary piping uh, to, for the septic system and other utilities. Uh, the normal high water line, we, uh, while we had our surveyor out there uh, picking up existing information, we asked the Owen Haskell to identify uh, the location of the high water line in accordance with CAPE's uh, new definition uh, for normal high water. And then a couple items came up during the review of this, uh, during the staff review. Uh, one was to uh, 
um, uh, to this, this small lot is um, around the existing pond that's there. And um, it was created when the, um, when Barbara Whitcomb created a lot um, across the pri pri uh, private way. So all we did here was to relabel the lot, part of lot seven. And then the last item is the road name. Um, there's a little, there's always been a confusion. Um, this road heading to the Jody property is called Old Mill Road, and this road serving the pool properties is also called Old Mill Road. So the staff asked us if we would consider uh, changing the name of this section of Old Mill Road, and the pools have agreed. Uh, they've actually come up with a, a name, uh, Elephant Rock Road, and it's in the process of going through the, the, the review by the assessor and um, 911 and all of that. So um, that will be uh, in the future. It will be changed to Elephant Rock Road. So those, those are the seven items that we're asking the board to amend uh, this plan. Uh, oh, uh, one other item. Uh, we are asking for two waivers. One is the stormwater management. Um, and uh, there's no impervious surface associated with any of these amendments. Uh, and there's no, drain no drainage will be altered as well. Um, the second waiver is on the erosion control plan, and there's no soil disturbance as a result of these amendments. So those are the two waivers. Thank you. Thank you. Do you all right, I'm going to ask if there are any public comments on completeness. But since the only public is the applicant and his, uh, and John, then uh, I guess not. So, public comment period is closed. Um, findings of completeness. Any questions? Any? Anything? Anybody get anything on completeness? <laughs> Go for it. A motion for the board to consider a motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Malcolm Poole, manager of the Poole family property, for amendments to the previously approved Old Mill Road private road be deemed complete. Waivers have been granted from submitting an erosion control plan and stormwater information because no disturbance of soil is proposed as a part of this application. Do I have a second? Second. Either one. He's closer to you. Go, go with Joe. Go with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any discussion too fast? <laughs> any discussion on completeness? All right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Next item. I'll go through my list here. Uh, do we want to do a site walk? No. Okay. And we, this was not noticed as a public hearing. Uh, according to my advice, a public hearing for this change is not required. Do we want to hold one? I'm asking the board's opinion on whether they want to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So, consensus being no. 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 All right, we will forego a public hearing and we will go on to decide whether to approve this project. So I just, I'm very confused about the road name and I know it's just me and, and I even watching you do that, I'm still confused about what section of road is being renamed. Where, I, I'm sorry, oh, Maureen's showing me. Because this 
Okay. Because oh, okay. Where it where it t turns off from Old Mill Road. Old Mill Road comes off of Ocean House, then you turn left onto Elephant Rock. Okay, I'm good now. Elephant Rock. Or Rock. Elephant Rock. 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 Yeah, R O C K. It's a, well, Malcolm knows more, but it's a, apparently it's a rock right rock. off the shore. I had and it as walk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the I saw the name in the in the emails, but so that was my only thing. I was very confused. Go ahead, Victoria. Just to follow up, because we did receive comment about changing the road name. Um, I'm not familiar with who. So are, are all the applicants? Well, actually. I don't know what to call them, the applicants, the abutters, they're all family members because someone said they didn't wish to change their property name. And I was wondering, is everybody on that plat need to change their address? Yes. Because there was one person that did not wish there's, to change. There's one abutter, Barbara Whitcomb, uh, was opposed to it initially. I spoke to her this morning, she's in Florida. I spoke to her this morning and as far as I know, I don't know if she spoke to Marine, but she's in favor of it now. Well, go ahead. In favor is probably a little strong. She doesn't oppose it. She's she's conceding. She's <laughs> she is um, she still would much prefer not having the inconvenience of a road name change, but because all the rest of the family is willing to do it, she's reluctantly going along with it. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the family because this has been going on for a while. Uh, there was a comment made, why don't we ask the prior, the Geordie subdivision to make the road name change? And my response was, I don't really care which one of them does it, um, but having two roads with the same name is a public safety hazard. Everyone has agreed to that. And I wanna thank the Poole family for um, rising to the occasion and coming up with something uh, a little different. Thank you. And one other follow -up. Go ahead. Um, John, as you were going through all those changes, I could remember if you mentioned that um, Pond Lot and Lot 1 were merged? No, uh, not, no. not Lot, lot one, 1, but the, um, she, Barbara also owns this lot across the public, uh, private way, yes. which is Lot 7. There wasn't a staff recommendation that the Pond Lot and Lot 1 be merged? Can I? Go ahead. Yes, there was a staff recommendation that those be removed because lot, the, the pond lot is a little over 20,000 square feet in a zone district with an 80,000 minimum lot size. And so showing these lot fragments as separate lots is, is problematic. Um, our ordinance does allow for lots to be divided by a road right of way if the minimum lot size is at least on one side of the road. So I spoke directly with Mrs. Wickham, asked her directly, will you please just merge lot one and lot the pond lot because they're both on the same side of the road and, and she is absolutely adamant that she is opposed to that. Okay. She's okay with having the pond lot be part of lot seven, which still meets our ordinance requirement. Okay, so you've moved the pond lot I see. It's the palm lot's going to be a part of lot seven, just as that septic system lot lot is part of lot three. So, um, based on her preference, it's it's still it's it's okay. We can move forward based on her preference rather than staff recommendation. Well, you don't have to take staff's recommendation, and frankly, both options meet the ordinance. They both meet. That's what I was looking for. So, thank you. Thank you, John. And since she conceded on the road name, let's give her the lot name, lot merging. So. I have a question. Go ahead, Andrew. Um, this is another technical question. Uh, on the road name thing, is that, that's part of the subdivision approval? I, it seemed like, at least in another issue, that was sort of almost outside of jurisdiction of this issue. So why, where well, does that fall? If we go through um, the ordinance standards um, under H, conformity with local ordinances, which is near the bottom of page three of the memo from staff, um, 
you are supposed to make a finding that the sub, any subdivision is in compliance with the subdivision ordinance. Um, honestly, this you know when we go back over these old developments, it's a it's a little creaky how this all plays together. Uh, to be quite honest, the addressing ordinance gives um, the assessor and the police chief wide authority to make changes in the interest of public safety. However, it just seems a lot easier with these existing situations if they get funneled through a process where there's already changes being made. So, you know, you're supposed to make a finding it's in, in compliance with the addressing ordinance. Technically, you shouldn't even have to deal with this. It should have already been changed. I can't tell you why it hasn't, but we, are, we have an existing situation. And um, Mrs. Wickham was very pleasant in explaining to me that they're already having deliveries not end up in the right place. So it is a real situation. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, Maureen, uh, on the same point, however, um, would it not be appropriate to label this road, Elephant Rock Road, formerly known as Old, uh, Old Mill yeah. Road? Because yeah. when you start you know, doing property descriptions based on the new plan, they were formerly bounded by a, a private way with a different name. So and to tie those two together? Yeah, the assessor said that he has done, I mean, we've done this before, everyone survived. Um, the assessor will put a note in the assessing cards that says these properties used to be on, you know, formerly named Old Mill Road, now called Elephant Rock Road. So we expect to have that. No, but for the purposes of the Registry of Deeds and, yep. and future conveyances of the property, would it not be useful to have it on this plan as well? I think it would be great to have it on this plan yeah, as well. I would recommend, John, that, you know, oh. But you could always bring it back for the October workshop, right? Yeah, thank you. Right. Anything else? Thank you. I'm just there glad the go. rock was in the shape of an elephant and not a donkey or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Weird name. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion. Go right ahead. All right, motion for approval. Findings of facts. One, Malcolm Poole, manager of the Poole family property is requesting amendments to the previously approved Old Mill Road, private road, which includes formalizing the septic system location for lot three, creating frontage for lot two, and creating a public access easement to the ocean for the benefit of the lots. And these amendments require review under section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. Number two, the private road amendments uh, will not result in undue water pollution. No construction is proposed in the 100 year old floodplain. No disturbance of soil is proposed. The slope of the land, pro proximity of, to streams, and state and local water resources. Uh, resource rules and regulations will not be compromised by the private road amendments. Number three, the private road amendments make no, make no changes to potable water supply. Number four, the private road amendments will not cause so soil erosion because no erosion, erosion disturbance is proposed. Number five, the private road amendments will not cause unreasonable road congestion or unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic. The private road does, does provide, or excuse me, provides uh, for road network connectivity while discouraging through traffic. The private road is laid out to conform to existing topography as much as is feasible. All lots are provided with vehicular access. No construction changes to the private road are proposed. Number six, the private road amendments include an easement to connect lot three to an existing septic tank, excuse me, septic system. Number seven, the private road amendments will not alter solid waste disposal. Number eight, the private road amendments uh, will not have an adverse, or excuse me, undue adverse impact on scenic or natural areas, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, or public access to the shoreline. Number nine, the private road amendments with conditions proposed below are compatible with applicable provisions to the comprehensive plan and town ordinance. Number 10, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number 11, the private road amendments will not adversely impact surface water quality. Number 12, private road amendments will not adversely impact the quality or quantity of groundwater. Number 13, the private road amendments do not 
uh, include alteration to the floodplain. Number 14, the private road amendments do not include alteration to wetlands. Number 15, the private road amendments do not include construction and will therefore not impact stormwater. Number 16, the private road amendments are not located within the watershed of Great Pond. Number 17, the private road amendments uh, are not located in more than one municipality. Number 18, the private road amendments are not located on land where liquidation harvesting was conducted. Number 19, uh, the private road amendments do not alter existing access to direct sunlight. Number 20, the private road amendments do not alter existing vegetative buffers throughout the throughout and around the subdivision and screening. Number 21, the private road amendments do not create a lot which might be subject to open space impact fee. Number 22, the private road amendments do not include construction and consequently do not include access to utilities. Number 23, the private road amendments do not include a phasing plan. Number 24, the applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Malcolm Poole, manager of the Poole family property, for amendments to the previously approved Old Mill Road private road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that this portion of Old Mill Road, the north branch of the existing Old Mill Road, be renamed in accordance with the addressing ordinance. Number two, the plan be revised to represent the septic lot as a portion of lot three rather than a separate lot. Uh, number three, that the plan be revised to represent the pond lot, quote, pond lot as a portion of lot one or seven. Uh, choose whichever one you want. Choose seven. Seven, okay, lucky number seven. Uh, so uh, let me just start that again. Number three, that the plan be revised to represent the quote pond lot as a portion of lot seven rather than a separate lot. Number four, that a road maintenance agreement in a form acceptable to the town attorney be signed and recorded with this plan. Number five, that the plans um, be revised and submitted to the town planner for compliance with the above conditions before the plan is signed by the planning board and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. All right, Victoria. Any discussion? Sure. Go ahead. Could we add the uh, note as a friendly amendment about the identification of the road by name? Formally known so as under conditions, add uh, that. Um, so a new condition five. It would be and another number condition. Yeah. So it would be. Can do you want me to do this? Go right ahead. Okay. You're good at this. Um, that the that it that the plans be revised to note the new name Elephant Rock Road replacing the existing Old Mill Road. Yes. And that would be the new condition five and then condition five becomes you condition six. Condition one and just say rename it to Old Mill Road? Mm, no. Because no, 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 you want the plan. Well, you have could, you could change one Re renamed, but we're we were trying to leave some flexibility for the applicant to work with the the assessor, and they've gotten there a lot quicker, which is good. Jonathan, you okay with that? I have to think about that one. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> Victoria, you okay with that? We should discuss. <laughs> you okay, Victoria? Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll add that. All right. Anything else? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. It's only 25 past eight. I feel like it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> Next item on the agenda Pollock Brook bridge, bridge and Boardwalk Resource Protection Permit. The Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to install 32 square feet of boardwalk over an RP2 wetland and replace an existing pedestrian bridge with a four foot wide by 70 foot long pedestrian bridge in the same location. Section 19-8-3 resource protection permit completeness and pub public hearing. All right. <laughs> it 
seems so much later than 825. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, my name is Jeremy Gabrielson. I'm the chair of the Conservation Committee representing the town's application for the permit uh, to replace the bridge uh, across Pollock Brook and also install a short section of boardwalk um, on a property adjacent to Spurwick River. Um, just saw you guys recently, but to give you a quick update and refresher, um, so there was um, an ex there was an existing bridge which is washed out across Pollock Brook. The town has been working for the last 18 months or so um, on a plan to replace that bridge with a new structure. It'll be a dock style aluminum structure. The um, existing bridge was 51 feet long and the new bridge um, is a slightly longer span. It'll fit right over the same spot, but it allows us to get up a little bit higher so that um, we can be a little bit higher from the floodplain um, and also hopefully not have it wash away, which was the problem with having the shorter span there previously. Um, this will tie into a new trail, really a, a rehabilitated trail um, that comes down along the marsh down slope from the cemetery, um, as well as a new section of trail that will go down uh, essentially to the old uh, bridge abutment on the Cape Elizabeth side of what was formerly the bridge uh, between Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough. Um, right across the way from where the boat launch fishing pier is on the Scarborough side of the line. Um, up near that section there is a small wetland that drains down onto the marsh. Um, that's where the boardwalk would be located. Our initial plans um, called for an 8x4 section of boardwalk which is consistent with the type of boardwalk that we've installed on multiple trails throughout town. Um, after looking through this with the engineer, um, they determined that the location that we had picked, which was the narrowest part of the, the wetland, um, was pretty close to the floodplain in a place where a lot of water moves through. Um, so their rec the uh, engineer's recommendation was that we just move that back from the edge of the wetland a little, little ways. Um, there's another constriction there. It's not quite as narrow as the first constriction, so it may be that we have to have some additional length of boardwalk, but it would be under 80 square feet of boardwalk. That's what we're asking for in the permit um, in any event. Um, and it would essentially be in the same location. We'd just be pulling this line down a little bit so that we could cross in a more suitable location and not have that boardwalk impacted by high tides um, or flood events. Um, that's the only change of any note um, since the last workshop. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. So we're discussing we're completeness. completeness. We're doing completeness first, yes. Do we have all the information we need to move forward with this application? Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? Go ahead. So, uh, Top of page four. Yeah, motion for completeness, bottom page three. Right? Okay, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts, facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for Resource protection permit to install 32 square feet of boardwalk. Does that change to 80? Um, it would be great to have that permit increase. Should we change it to 100? No, 80 is more than sufficient. Being just so we don't have to come back. You know, we've done this before. Give them. Is there a limit? Uh, before I go any farther here. Go ahead. Well, it's, it's just the application before you is 32 square feet, and it's, as part of the review, it's been bumped up to 80. Okay, so stick so with the 80. Yeah, okay. the proposed motion puts okay. condition, is proposing conditions that bumps it up to 80. Okay. If you want to change it to 80 now, it's fine. Okay. And if your question is, is 80 a lot, I think the largest this board has granted has been, you know, 5,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. 
to install 80 square feet of boardwalk in an RP2 wetland and replace an existing 51 foot long pedestrian bridge with a 70 foot long pedestrian bridge across Pollock Brook be deemed complete. Waivers granted include one foot contours of the wetland where two foot contours have been provided and waiver the stormwater runoff plan due to the small amount of impervious surface proposed. Do I have a second? Victoria? Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor? All right, it's unanimous. Um, I have a question. Where is that 80 feet? Is that instead of the 32 square feet? Correct. Yes. Thank you. I forgot to ask. Well, anyway. So we have a public hearing uh, scheduled for this evening on this topic. And, but seeing no public here, um, I just want to state that there's no one here to speak. So we'll just move on. Do we want to discuss the uh, application in any more detail? Review. Oh, site walk. Ooh. I think we talked about this a little bit at the workshop. Do we need, does anyone feel the need for a site walk? Seeing shaking heads. Um, actually, <coughs> hate to be the bearer of any news. Um, I don't know, can we talk about it and then decide if we need a site walk? Or is that? Yeah. Because I might be moved to not move okay. for a site walk. <laughs> OK. Because we can always table that. So all right, you have some questions? I do. Well, it seemed like there were some serious concerns about um, the bridge location and construction method, I guess, given its access in the floodplain, or the, uh, the saltwater marsh, actually not. Uh, and that potentially causing large problems for permitting. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, well, that's, that's question one. I have another one, too. But I'm wondering, I mean, if, that's, if that could potentially kill the, process, the, the whole project if you end up having to go for a, um, a permit, a federal permit to put the bridge in place, because you're talking about uh, one that spans it would not, right? I think that's as I read it. And then if you go with the, the kind that's much lighter and has much less impacts, it would trigger federal permit from the I can, USA's. I, I can address that very briefly. Yep. Um, the town planner is much more well versed in the federal permitting process here than I am. Um, but um, we have been in consultation with both the Army Corps and the DEP, um, and the, the um, town engineer has been working on those permitting requirements. And my understanding is that um, we're all set in terms of those permits. So no matter the bridge type, is what you're saying? Maureen? So the, the, the DEP has issued a permit for the bridge. Okay. And I think you're, you're worried about the notes that go down the side of the permit well, there's, from the state. Well, there was the US. It said if there's any impact on saltwater marsh that it right. triggered the US. So, so it, one of the right. things that happened is when we submitted, we have received the state permit. We're not doing anything in the saltwater marsh, so we don't need a federal permit for the bridge. So um, you decided not to use the one that has the. We never wanted to. Okay. It, there was that there was opposite. there was a little bit of confusion uh, yeah. with permitting authorities. Yeah. Um, there has never been any proposal to put any kind of support structure in Pollock Brook at all. The intent has always been for the bridge to land from one bond bank to the other bank. Uh, when the application was submitted to the DEP, pictures of the existing bridge were included in the application. And of course, the existing bridge is sitting in Pollock Brook now, which created some concern that we were trying to replicate what's in the brook, and in fact, that's not what we're proposing. We're proposing to remove what's left of the bridge that's sitting in the brook and 
put in a new bridge that would span the banks and be above the brook and above the flood. Right, but I think the point was the, the I know it's shown in here, one of these bridge types that has, it's the lighter one that has the aluminum, yes. the rods that extend and into the salt marsh, do they not? The, the rods, the, the helical piers that anchor the sides uh, would be on the banks outside of the salt marsh. They would not in any so way no be installed. in the salt marsh? No, because I've had to go through permitting in a salt marsh, and okay. I promised I would never do that again. Great. <laughs> I, I, I think that seems like the widest history. I was going to suggest if that was, if there was, that was the where you were leaning to to try and put it in the freshwater marsh, because it sounds like that's an easier sell for whatever strange reason. Right. Um, I, that, I, I'm fine I, with that. Okay, that I just want to just, it. it's probably we're at the point where I should disclose that I am also the staff person to the Conservation Committee, so I've been doing a lot of the work on their behalf. Um, they actually did look at installing the bridge in the freshwater portion, which is a couple of hundred feet inland of the proposed location. Amazingly, at that point, the, bri the, the br brook gets much, much wider. So it became almost not really feasible to move it anywhere but where had it always been and where it is right now is still salt water. But nothing would go in the bank. It goes from dry to dry on either side of the boardwalk, of the brook. Maureen, the plan specs do show a dock style bridge with a crib midstream. Is that not part that of it? That crib, um, was shown by the town engineer um, for the boardwalk portion, not for the bridge. And that almost never, there's a couple of boardwalks in town that have actually used that kind of cribbing, but in most cases it never gets used. And uh, we've all wished that had been removed from the plan. <laughs> I have one more little contentious piece here that I couldn't rectify. In the Somewhere along the lines here, I saw a reference to um, the fact that you can't build structures or do anything within 25 feet of the edge of a cemetery. And I'm looking at the proposed trail, and there's a point where it's pinched between the wetland, and it says it's really kind of right where the end of the current trail is. So you've got the cemetery boundary and this, this freshwater wetland there. Is that going to be an issue there? I mean, where are you going to put the trail? I mean, is there, there the, a... The issue regarding the 25 feet was really an issue with the north side of the bridge. And the north side of the bridge actually has about 60 graves that date back to the 1700s that have nothing but a little stone about this big. So it's not this cemetery? Right. It's a small unmarked cemetery that was located adjacent to the, the north abutment of the bridge. It is located. Okay, but does the trail not count as basically anything in this case with regards to the main, to the Spurwing Cemetery? I mean, to me, that's considered development in a way, right? So what I, I, what I don't want is to get into trouble because you put this trail there and now you're 25 feet from the cemetery and somebody considers, considers it development that's against, I forget which rule it even showed up as. Um, you know, that's an interesting question. And I, I can tell you that there were some that felt that there was no need to put um, that section of trail in because we would just connect it into the cemetery and use the cemetery roads mm -hmm. as the connector. So I don't think we ever considered putting a trail within 25 feet of the cemetery being a problem there because we wanted to actually use the cemetery roads. Well, some of us did. Um, the 25 foot was really what we were looking, every, every reference to the 25 foot has been regarding that northern side of Pollock Brook. That's where we had the, um, the test pits dug and we have one place where the bridge can land where the test pit um, came at, back with no human remains. I would point out that the existing cemetery does have trails and roads through it. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, those roads are for people who walk to Correct. visit loved ones who are. Correct. Um, so I, I, that is, raises a question about the 25 feet, but I remember when we talked about this at the workshop, um, I had a little bit of concern of that, but you had mentioned something about 
Uh, there's quite a downslope from the edge and there's going to be a buffer between those. Can you, can you yeah. talk about that a little bit more? Uh, sure. So um, for the existing, the, the, the main cemetery here uh, adjacent to Spurwing Church, um, there's a, there's a the, sort of the, the cemetery slopes down but then there's a, a bluff where it drops off. And we've actually had the town engineer come out and, and survey the edge of this wetland so to make sure that we have enough room to put a trail in between the marsh and the, the cemetery. And the idea is that we'll be able to put that trail in down slope from the bluff. So if you were up in the cemetery, you might see ahead walking along the trail, but it, it's down far enough out of the visual field from, from what you would normally see in the cemetery that it shouldn't present a, a visual disturbance. And is there, is there an existing, or is there an informal trail there now? There was a trail that came along this edge of the marsh. Um, I think it, I'm not, I think, I'm not sure exactly how far up it came, to be perfectly honest. We did do a site walk with the planning, uh, with the conservation committee, I want to say about two years ago, um, and looked at the feasibility of, of putting this trail in downslope. It, 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 there's room to do it. Maureen, do you have anything on that? It's, it's threading the needle there. Okay. I mean, I was, I was one of the advocates of just using the roads in the cemetery, so. I prefer not. Well, trail. yeah. But the, na the nature lovers, they went with this. And it's really threading the needle because that, you know, that the Spurwink Marsh is, is just number one quality, rated high value for wildlife, and has all the local protections and all the state protections. And we have to be a minimum amount of feet away from that. And we don't want to be in, this, in the actual respectful worship area of the cemetery. So there's, in that one spot, there is a pinch point where you just take it right down through the middle. And do you think, was Andrew, I think, brings up a valid point that this would be considered development within the 25 feet of a cemetery? We, you know, the only time we've talked about the 25 foot setback has been when we've been talking with the Main Historic Preservation Commission as part of the historic. And this is, this is a working cemetery. It's not one yeah, that- Yeah, but it clearly states Main Revised Statute under Title 13, Section 1371 states construction or excavation may not be conducted within 25 feet of a known braille site or within 25 feet of boundaries of an established cemetery, which is whichever is greater. I mean, that's right in the document you just gave me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm sort of, I mean, I don't personally have a problem with it, but what I don't want to happen is the state to come back and say, you put a trail, you excavated 25 feet within a, a no, within an established cemetery. I mean, that is an established cemetery. Is it well, and, and yes, it is established cemetery. So the question would be, is this development? And in this case, there is no excavation that will occur. It is clearing, raking, um, removal of shrub. There will be no removal of trees. And I, the question then becomes, would the state interpret that provision to call this type of rustic trail development? Yeah, I, I just want to ask our questions because I don't want it to yep. be an issue down the road. And Thank it's you. better to think about it now than to get you know smacked down later on. Because trust me, we've had permit issues dealing with my work, and they, you know they, you don't you basically have to follow the rule. And, and I mean, yeah, the, the question is whether this is considered construction or excavation. I think. That makes sense if you're just basically clearing. I don't know how any, you're not excav excavating, suggests digging down. So what I would say is don't plan on digging down anywhere. Our in intention section. is to just do a raked out trail surface yeah. consistent with what we've got elsewhere. I, you know, I think the installation of the boardwalk, I could see an argument for saying that that constitutes construction, but that clearly exceeds the 25. Yeah, you're, like, yeah it's like, just literally it's that, just one that one little section, section there. Trail. And you know the the intention, our intention, the way that we um, have have installed these trails in the past is literally with a rake um, and maybe a pair of clippers. So, go ahead, Maureen. And, and um, technically, the board isn't being asked to approve the trail. You're being asked to approve the the bridge, 
and the boardwalk. Yeah, we're doing a resource protection permit. For the, yes, for, for, the, the, for the bridge, bridge, which, yes. And the bridge is marginal whether you, we need the permit from the town, but since we have to come for the boardwalk, we're asking for the permit for the bridge, but the, the trail isn't part of the application. So, I was gonna ask the question, did DEP look at the trail when they, when they permitted? We have the, D there are two permits. The, the permit for, and there are two permits because there are different tier levels at the state. And so the trail permit is pending. The bridge permit has been issued. Okay. All right, then I guess that was just a comment off topic. Well, those are some good questions. I think it's a good question. Good question. Um, I do have one question. We haven't heard much of it, and we don't need to belabor at this point. Um, the old bridge that washed out, I'm thinking that it's probably a different design than the new bridge that's proposed, so yes. we don't think we're going to have the same problem with this new bridge? No, I, I, for a couple of reasons. One, um, this bridge is not going to be made out of a material that floats, um, so that should help. Um, and two, um, this is going to have helical anchors that'll tie it into the bank on either side. Uh, my understanding is the old bridge literally just got lifted off either by ice or, or high water, we're not sure which, and kind of moved a little bit, and then it moved a little bit more and wound up. Uh, but th this will be securely okay. anchored on the, both sides. The old bridge, we, we speculate that it was created by dropping two tree limbs across the bank and then nailing decking on top of them without any anchoring on either side. I guess lawyers weren't involved in that, were they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Anything else? So back to the question, do we want a site walk? Oh, sorry. Um, no, I'm good now. You're good? Yep. Okay. All right. So no, no site walk. Any, are we ready to move to a conclusion or are there more questions? I have a motion. Go right ahead. All right. Motion for approval. Findings of facts. Number one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to install 32 square feet of boardwalk in an RP2 wetland and replace an existing 51 foot long pedestrian bridge with a 70 foot long pedestrian bridge across Pollock Brook, which requires a review. Is that 80? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I said 32. So. Oh, okay. yeah, correct. Sorry, let me start that again. Uh, number one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to install an 80 square foot uh, boardwalk in an RP2 wetland to replace an existing 51 foot long pedestrian bridge with a 70 foot long pedestrian bridge across Pollock Brook, which requires a review under section 19-8-3 of the resource protection permit regulations. Number two, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Number three, the proposed bridge or boardwalk and boardwalk will not impound surface waters to or reduce the absorption capacity or the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. Number four, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. Number five, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Number six, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will not pose problems related to the support of structures. Number seven, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. Number eight, the proposed bridge and boardwalk are not located in and therefore will not disturb coastal dunes or contiguous back dune areas. Uh, number nine, the proposed bridge and boardwalk will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. Number 10, the bridge and boardwalk will 
disturb a minimum amount of ground area and otherwise will maintain an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land users. Number 11, the bridge and boardwalk will, by, remo by not removing vegetation or disrupting ground surface will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions thereof. Number 12, the bridge and boardwalk will be accomplished without discharging wasteful, uh, excuse me, wastewater from buildings and from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewage ordinances. Uh, number 13, the bridge and boardwalk subject to the condition below is not located in the 100 year flood plan. And 14, the application sub, uh, substantially complies with section 19-8-3 of the resource protection regulations. It is. Good job. I'm just, Seconds. no one's looking. All right, hold on, oh, no. I'm not done. Oh. He's not done yet. Therefore, <laughs> you're just getting drink. Yeah. <laughs> be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to install 80 square feet of boardwalk in an RP2 wetland and replace an existing 51 foot long pedestrian bridge with a 70 foot long pedestrian bridge across Pollock Brook be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the MDEP permit with, uh, excuse me, permit for the boardwalk be obtained. Number two, that the anchor for the south side of the bridge be revised to elevate the, the lowest horizontal member of the bridge to at least one foot above flood elevation, now at nine feet. Yeah. All right. Three, that the boardwalk be relocated upland of flood elevation nine feet and uh, may be increased in size to no more than 80 square feet of RP2 wetland alteration. Number four, that there be no alteration to the site until plans have been revised and submitted to the town planner to satisfy the above conditions. Now, Joe. Second. <laughs> I have a question on the conditions. It is the second part of the sentence in number three of the conditions relevant since we upped the, the approval to 80 square feet? Where it says may be increased to a size of no more than 80 square feet. So if we end it right after a flood elevation of nine feet, we're good? We get rid of number three and four. No. No, just no, the second part. I'm just part. saying the second half of the sentence on oh. number three. Since we upped the uh, the permit to 80 square feet. That's all I'm saying. Any, I'm good you're with, fine with uh, that? taking that part out. How about you, Jim? Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one is opposed. Everyone is in favor. Okay. All right. Got a grant. Good luck at building that. Okay. So now's the time for public comment for items not on the agenda. Seeing no public, I'll take the next motion. Motion to adjourn. All right. Do I have uh, and a second? Anyone opposed? All those in favor? All right. We're done.